You're listening to Radio Intifada, the Southwest Asia and North Africa Collective of KPFK. Our next guest is Dr. Taner Akjam, who is a professor of history at Clark University, author of many books, including A Shameful Act and From Empire to Republic. He is one of the first Turkish scholars to openly acknowledge and discuss the Armenian genocide. Welcome to Radio Intifada, Dr. Akjam. It's so nice to have you with us. Thank you very much. Nice having me on your program. Now, we just heard from an earlier interview with Dr. Samantha Power the significance of recognition both for the U.S. and the Armenians. And Dr. Richard Falk, towards the end of his interview, discussed with us the internal ramifications for acknowledging the genocide within Turkey. Can you tell us how Turkey might benefit if it was to recognize the Armenian genocide? It's not only a problem of Turkey or Turks. It's a general rule. If a society faces its history... It develops, a dem- it turns into a democratic country, period. Mm-hmm. There is no other example in the world. If you want to respect human rights, if you want to develop democracy in your country, you have to face your own history and acknowledge historic injustices. If you criminalize discussing on history, this means you will developing a very totalitarian regime. This is the ABC of a democracy in a country. So if Turkey really wants to be a member of world countries, member of the civilized world, it should face its own history and acknowledge in the historic wrongdoing. This is for Turkey's future, this is for Turkey's democracy, this is for Turkey's benefits, period. Can you tell us maybe how today Turkey might benefit socially, politically, and economically if it was to recognize? I mean, economically, I don't know. I don't like to argue in that li- on that line. I don't want to make uh, recognition of historic injustices as an economic profitable act. Right. Indeed, in Turkish-Armenian case, it will bring a lot of uh, new economic sources for Turkey. There are altogether maybe three, four, five million Armenians in diaspora living, and they are uh, originally from histo- what they call historic Armenia. Mm-hmm. This is today's Turkey, and it will increase an enormous amount of tourism for Turkey, and it will really develop the region for Turkey. This is number one. Number second, if Turkey opens the border with Armenia, it will foster the economic development in the region. It will develop the trade in the region, Mm -hmm. uh, and it will allow Turkey to have a direct economic and uh, political access towards the Central Asia, and you can make a list of all these benefits for Turkey. And you use the term transnational justice uh, in one of your articles. Can you expand on that thought for us? This is a very simple rule. If a totalitarian society regime transforms itself towards a democracy, mm-hmm. the one of the central questions is what is going to happen with justice regarding the injustices in the past? How a society should face its own injustices in the past in order to create a just society. So Turkey is now in such a phase, in such a process. This is a transformation from an authoritarian regime towards a democratic regime, and in that sense, transitional justice. The justice as a part of transition from totalitarianism to democracy is an important problem in Turkey. So the main question is, not, it has nothing to do only with Armenians. It's a very general problem. Mm-hmm. What are the ways and venues for Turkey to solve certain injustices that remains in the past? This is the Armenian question. This is the Kurdish question. This is the uh, suppression and discrimination of the uh, religious and ethnic minorities, such as Alevites. This is mm-hmm. the human rights abuses against the progressive people in 1960s, 70s, and 80s. What are the ways that these injustices can be rectified? And this is the major question that Turkey must answer in order to develop a democratic, just society. Without rectifying historic injustices, you cannot create and develop a just and democratic society. This is the basic rule. So the suppression of historical evidence regarding all of the atrocities that the Ottomans and the Turks had committed becomes just one component of a much bigger picture, is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. There were other major human rights abuses 
uh, during 1970s and 80s. Right. And Turkey really must face with all these problems in order to create security in the region also. It's also very important. The basic problem in the Middle East that we are facing is today the security. And main reason why there is an insecurity in the region is that there is not there is no trust there among different ethnic and religious groups because some of the groups like Turks Turkey makes denial as its foreign policy and right. if you develop a foreign policy based on denial of historic injustices then the other ethnic groups consider this as a threat to their own existence they consider this within the old paradigm and they think that there is a potential danger danger that these old historic injustices could repeat itself again. This is, I think, a very important part for Turkey and for the Middle East, generally. You said it actually perfectly, or you wrote it perfectly when you stated in your recent article what one does to enhance one's own security causes a reaction that in the end can make one even less secure, appears threatening to their neighbors. Now, when you're speaking of the neighbors, are you talking about the other Arab countries, or are you talking about Europe, or both? I basically spoke in that article the Arabs, Kurds, mm -hmm. Armenians, and Greeks in the region. Okay. Because these are the basic nation groups that really has the sense of a threat from Turkey, and Turkey can overcome and solve this issue only by facing its own history. So there's no unspoken drawback here with the UN accession? No, no, no. This has basically... What I meant is the trauma in the Middle East. Look, I can give you another example. How many post-traumatic post centers do you have here in the United States? A Hundreds lot. maybe. A, a lot. lot. Why? Because uh, some of the American soldiers fought in the Vietnam or in the uh, war regions for how many years? One year? And they are coming here and we have here all post-traumatic centers here to rehabilitate, to, to treat all these people. They, they have this post-traumatic stress. My dear listeners, the people in the Middle East are, have been living more than 100 years under this. Threat. Right, right. Absolutely, one war after the other. The entire Middle East is traumatized. So they cannot make the distinction between past and present. Right. Past is the present in the Middle East. Without addressing the past, you cannot solve any present security problem in the Middle East. This is what the American politicians don't understand very well. Now, if you can talk to me a little bit about the equality under law in Turkey, as far as freedom of speech, social reforms, they're all somehow have now come to be understood as a threat to national security. Yes, it is exactly the existing mentality in Turkey. There is not, there is no freedom of speech regarding the discussing historic injustices because according to Turkish Penal Code 301, facing history talking and debating on historic injustices are considered as a threat to Turkey's national security. There are already court decisions to that direction. In 2007, a court in Istanbul openly decided that talking on genocide is not a protected speech because talking on genocide threats the Turkey's national security, public order, stability, and so on. So, in order to overcome this problem, Turkey must change the existing national security concept, mm -hmm. and Turkey also stop criminalizing to discuss on history. Are you talking about Article 301, Dr. Akjam? This is Article 301 is the peak of an iceberg. Okay. There are other laws. For example, in Turkey, it is also banned to criticize Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the founder of Turkish Republic. Hmm. There are a lot of other articles in Turkish criminal code. Human rights organizations have made already a list of these articles. Turkey must revise really its own penal code and freedom of speech as an important step to create a just society in Turkey. So what I'm trying to say is we have two aspects of the problem. One is the freedom of speech, but freedom of speech is not the end solution is not the end goal in that problem that we are talking about. Freedom of speech is only the uh, entrance ticket to the problem area. This is namely to rectify historic injustices. 
This is not only a problem of freedom of speech, but this is a problem of justice.